Hey everybody, Ryan Medora here, and I am talking to you about improvisation because what do we want when we play bass? Well, we want to feel comfortable on our instrument. We want to be able to play whatever we can from a technical standpoint, and we want to be able to get creative and, you know, come up with cool parts because that's what we want to do. Um, so this is known as improvising on our instrument. And believe it or not, you can head over to my website, ryanmedora.com and get a free ebook called Beginner Improvisation for Bass Players. Uh, but right now I'm going to go over a couple ways, a couple methods that I use for coming up with a bass line and then changing it, manipulating it, getting creative with it so that it doesn't sound like I'm playing exactly the same theme over and over and over again. So we're going to start off by kind of thinking about our basic musical elements, meaning what key are we in? What's our chord progression? And what kind of feel or groove or vibe are we kind of going with? Um, in this situation, we are in the key of A. Nice, wonderful place for us bass players. Our chord progression is going to be two bars of A, or two measures of A, and then two measures of E. We can also think about this as saying, okay, we're on our one chord because if we're in the key of A, A is our tonic. We'll be on our one chord for two bars, so one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then we're going to go to our five chord, E, which we can go up to the fifth scale degree. One, two, three, four, five, we get to an E. And uh, we'll be playing over an E major chord for two bars as well. So the whole chord progression will go A, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, E, two, three, four. And uh, it's a four bar phrase that we're just going to repeat over and over again. Um, it's, this is a very common thing in a lot of songs, just playing a couple bars on the one chord, a couple bars on the five chord and repeating that theme. So um, this will help you hopefully navigate a couple of songs that have chord progressions that do exactly that. Next, um, now that we've decided we're in the key of A, we have our basic chord progression and how long we're playing each chord for, then we're going to think about the kind of feel and vibe that we want. Now the track that I'm playing along to kind of has just like a kind of like classic soul somewhere in the world of doo-wop, whatever, just grooviness. Um, and because of that, I'm going to kind of take a page out of the Duck Dunn book because that's always a good book to, to pull from. And I'm going to play um, a theme that uses my root, my fifth, and my sixth in terms of scale degrees, which means that if I'm in the key of A, here's my root, and then I want to go one, two, three, four, five. The fifth is E, which is also part of the A chord. It's the fifth of the chord. And then I'm going to use my sixth, which is an F sharp. That's just like a nice consonant note to use. It's part of the major pentatonic scale. Uh, there are plenty of bass lines in the world of soul, R&B, blues, etc. that use this kind of theme, and I'm primarily going to be playing with those couple of notes. So first I'm just going to start coming up with a groove. That'll be my theme. I'm going root, sixth, fifth, sixth, and then playing the root again, and then sixth, fifth, sixth again. And sometimes I'll play a couple attack a couple of attacks for some of these notes. So I'm just going to repeat this over the A chord a couple times just to get the feel for it. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, what, how else could I play this if I wanted to get creative with just using this set of notes, this kind of theme that I'm playing? Um, what I'm going to do is try to find out the other places on the fretboard where I can grab some of these notes. So if I'm using an A as my root, an E as my fifth, and the F sharp as the sixth scale degree, I'm going to say, okay, well, where else can I find these? Here's an A. I could find the octave of it. I could use the open string. Uh, I could play here, I could play up here, plenty of different places to find the note A. And then I'll do the same thing with the other notes. So we need an E. I have my E here at the 7th fret. I could use my open E. I can grab an E here. I can grab an E here. And this is really where just knowing the notes on your instrument comes in handy. Or at least being able to see some of the relationships on the bass. Like, oh, if I'm playing my root and my 5th, I can find that here, I can find that here, I can find that there, lots of different places. So this is definitely where the fretboard awareness comes into play. So the next note that I need is an F sharp. Here's an F sharp, here's an F sharp, here's an F sharp, 
Again, a lot of different locations. And now I'm going to try to play the theme in a couple different places. So we have the, the original spot. And then I say, okay, well, what if I went to my lower E and my lower F sharp? So I'm playing the same theme, but it sounds like I've done quite a bit to, uh, to change it just by changing the register. So you can get playful and go like this. And that might be an approach that you take if you're, if you're playing with people, if you're jamming with, fo with folks, or even if you're playing over a song, maybe you'd choose to play a verse or play for a little while in one position, and then you switch and you play in the lower register. You get to choose because really from a functional standpoint you're able to do the same thing you're able to accomplish the same goals you could also say oh well what if i played it with a different fingering pattern where instead of playing the f sharp here i got it over here and maybe i even wanted to play my a higher so i start like this change it to this same notes just a different way of playing it Here's my higher A. Going for it low. And I'm changing things up just slightly. So now that we've done that, we can actually find the same groove over the five chord, because remember our chord progression plays two bars on A and then two bars on E. And because we're playing an A major chord and then an E major chord, we can actually use the same musical theme. So now I'm gonna find my E. I'm going to find the 5th and 6th scale degrees in respect to the E. So maybe sometimes I'll go like, oh, here's my E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here's my 5th, and here's the 6th, which means I'm using an E. And then the other notes in this part of the groove are going to be B and then a C sharp. So now I know I can play it like this. I could also find these notes lower using the E here and then finding the C sharp here and the B here. I could also use my open E. And then I can put it all together and say, all right, I'm gonna go from my A chord for two bars to my E chord for two bars. lower and I'm going to go higher and there you go taking the same concept the same theme of the groove and moving it to both of the chords in the chord progression and then finding a lot of those notes in different places so that we can get creative with our approach to it and then if you want, you can throw in all kinds of passing tones and fun little moves. A lot of like major pentatonic stuff works really well, um, but I'll let you get creative with that. And just so you know, if you want more info about this, check out other videos that I've got on my YouTube channel. Um, please head over to my website, ryanmedora.com. You can download beginner improvisation for bass players for free. It's a free ebook. Just go to the website, you can download it. It's all good. And then there's also a volume two that you can get as well if you'd like. So. Happy practicing, everybody. Keep it groovy. Take care. See you next time.